Today on Sugar Spun Run, I'll be showing you how to make petty fours. Hey, you Sugar Spun Bakers, Sam here, and today I'm really excited to share these petty fours with you. And I'm really glad I looked up how to pronounce that before I started filming because evidently it is not petite fours, as I've been saying, so I'm sure I would've gotten a lot of comments for that. I'm sure my accent is butchering it anyway, but that's not the point. Today I'm really excited to share this recipe with you. Petty fours are small, pretty much bite-sized or two bite-sized cakes. They have little layers in between and they might look complicated, but they're actually pretty simple. Now to get started, you're going to want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, we will grab our butter. You will need two thirds cup of unsalted butter and you want this to be softened. We are starting by making the cake layer for our petty fours. Next, you're going to add four ounces of cream cheese. You do want to use the brick style cream cheese, not the spreadable kind that comes in a tub. We'll add this in with our butter. The cream cheese that I'm using in this recipe not only lends some sturdiness to the cake, but it makes it nice and soft and nice and flavorful as well. But it's not going to make it taste like cream cheese. And you wanna make sure that your cream cheese is softened. Now you're going to need one and a half cups of granulated sugar and grab an electric mixer for this point. You could use a stand mixer instead. Today I'm just using my hand mixer and we are going to cream everything together until it's combined. I'm going to start on low speed and then gradually increase the speed to high. So once your batter is nicely combined and it's light and fluffy, we can go on to add our eggs. You're going to need four large eggs for this recipe. As usual, I prefer them to be room temperature and we are going to add them one at a time. And after each addition, you're going to want to stir on about medium speed for about 10 seconds or until that egg is really well incorporated into your batter. Once your eggs are nicely incorporated, you're going to want to use a spatula to scrape the sides and bottom of the bowl to make sure that everything is nicely combined. And here we will stir in our vanilla extract and you'll need two teaspoons of vanilla extract. I love that moment when you add the vanilla extract to the butter and the sugar and everything just starts to smell so good and nothing's even in the oven yet. Okay, so our egg mixture is good, nice and smooth and well mixed. So you're going to need a separate bowl for your dry ingredients. We are going to start with two cups of all purpose flour. We'll add a teaspoon of baking powder and a half teaspoon of salt and whisk everything together so our dry ingredients are well combined. All right, we're just about ready to combine things, so you're going to want to grab your butter and your egg mixture, but before you go any further, you're going to want to measure out one fourth cup of milk. I am using whole milk today, and that's what I recommend. Now, we are going to alternate adding the flour mixture and adding the milk to our batter. You can use your electric hand mixer on low speed, or you can use a spatula and just stir it by hand, and that's what I'm going to be doing today. I recommend starting and ending with the flour mixture, and since it's not very much milk, I'll usually add the flour in about three parts and the milk in about two. So the reason we alternate adding the flour mixture and the milk is just because it helps the batter to be very well combined, all the ingredients to be nicely incorporated. And once your flour is mostly absorbed, that's when you're going to add your milk. Ideally, your milk should also be at room temperature. Add the last of our flour. All right, so our batter is ready to bake. So to bake this cake, I recommend using two jelly roll pans. Now, if you only have one, you can bake one layer at a time, that's fine. I am going to spray each pan generously with baking spray. If you don't have baking spray, you can grease and flour the pans instead. Also, if you do have two jelly roll pans, but your oven only fits one at a time, it's fine for one of them to wait on the counter while the first one bakes. When I use the spray to even it out, I like to just grab a plastic bag and use that to kind of smear the spray around. I don't like to use a paper towel because that absorbs a lot of the spray that we're using to keep our cake from sticking, but a plastic baggie does a nice job of distributing it without absorbing it. Now you're going to want to divide your batter as evenly as possible, especially if you are baking both of these cakes at the same time, because you want them to bake evenly. Now you can use a scale, which is what I'm going to do. You can go cup for a cup, or you can just eyeball it. Just be aware that if you go that route, then most likely your cakes are not going to bake completely evenly. 
So that was about 18 ounces of batter per cake pan for me. And then you'll want to use your spatula to smooth the batter out to every corner. You want to have as smooth of a surface as possible. All right, once you have that all divvied up, we can go ahead and head over to our 350 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven. Now these cakes, if you can bake them both at the same time, it's gonna take about 12 minutes for them to finish baking. You might need a little bit less time if you only do one at a time. Now, when they are finished baking, they might still look a little bit underdone. They're going to be pretty pale still. They are not going to have a golden brown crust on top, but if you touch them, they should feel, if you lightly touch the surface, it should feel springy. And if you insert a toothpick in the center, it should be clean or come out with just a few moist crumbs and no wet batter. And I'm sorry, that's 15 minutes, not 12. If you're baking just one sheet at a time, you'll probably only need about 12 to 13 minutes. If you're baking both, you're going to need closer to 15 to 16. You'll want to let each cake layer cool completely before we go any further, which shouldn't take very long because they're pretty thin cakes that are going to cool pretty quickly. Now, once they're cooled, we are going to be working with one cake layer at a time. You're going to want to run a knife along the edge of the cake just to loosen out of the pan. And I like to use a spatula just to make sure the bottom is loosened from the pan. And now you're going to want to divide this cake into three even pieces. And you can just eyeball it. I just like to use a ruler because it means I'm going to get the least amount of waste. The more even your cake layers are, the more petit fours or petit fours, not petite fours, you're going to get out of them. Now we're going to lift up one of these layers and transfer it to a clean surface. I actually like to flip it over and use the bottom of the cake because it's a little bit more porous, so it's going to absorb the flavor that we're putting in the middle a little bit better. Now this is going to be our first layer, so we're going to need our fillings at this point or our jam layers or whatever you wanna use. I'm going to be using raspberry cake filling today, which I just shared a video on how to make this and I will link to that for you. And I'm also going to be using lemon curd. A half batch of my homemade lemon curd is perfect for this recipe. Now I'm going to start with just one of these flavorings. Let's go ahead and start with the raspberry cake filling. We will just add that on here and you'll want to spread it nice and evenly. Now, petit fours can be made with all different kinds of fillings. If you want to use a rich chocolate frosting or if you just want to use a fruit filling, that's completely fine. This, this part here is wide open to your interpretation. Now you don't want your filling to be too thick or else the cake layers are going to slide off of each other. So this is going to be a fairly thin layer. Not so thin that you can't taste the jam, but you don't want to make it too thick. I always tend to go a little bit heavier on the filling than I really should, so I'm going to try to restrain myself this time. All right, so once you have your first layer done, you're going to want to grab another layer and we'll place this over our first layer. And you'll want to just gently press down. This will help squeeze out any extra filling. That way, when you finally go to cut into these, the layers don't slide everywhere. Gently but firmly press down, I should say. Now we'll do our second layer of filling. And as I mentioned for this one, I am going to be using lemon curd. This recipe is so great for bridal showers or baby showers or any party. They're such a fun two bite treat. All right, now we will grab our last layer and place that over top. And again, just firmly press down. And we have our first layer cake. The second cake we will use to make another one of these. It can be identical or you can use different fillings on that one, but I'm just gonna be focusing on this one today. Now, you can either use cookie cutters to cut out your shapes from this, or you can just use a knife. I prefer to use cookie cutters because it gives you more precise shapes, but a knife will give, you more, will give you more for your money because you're going to be able to use more of this. You're not going to have space left from where, you did, where your cookie cutter didn't sit. Oops, looks like I went a little bit too close to the edge here. So we'll call that one a practice one. Let's go ahead and do another. That's a little more like it. Just gently slide it out of the cookie cutter. Can you see those pretty layers? And then I'm just going to place these on a wax paper lined baking sheet. If your bottom layer is sticking to your surface, you just want to use a spatula to pop that up. These are just so pretty, I love them. 
Now don't forget you are going to want to repeat everything you just saw here with your second sheet of cake, but for today's video I'm just going to focus on the first one that we made, that way you don't have to watch me do the same thing twice. You'll want to place these in the freezer while you prepare your icing. Now let's talk for a second about Petit Four icing. Characteristically, these little cakes are cloaked in a frosting. It's not like traditional buttercream. It is a smooth icing that just smoothly coats the little cakes. Now the traditional icing that's used is made with a candy thermometer. It's a little bit tricky and honestly, I'm not a huge fan of it. It's poured fondant is what is typically used. There's another version that's popular out there that's made with white chocolate. My taste testers and I just thought it was much too sweet. We were not fans. My personal preference was to develop my own icing, which took a lot of attempts, but was so worth it in the end. Basically what I'm using is a melted buttercream. Now you can make this in the microwave and I will explain how in the description, but I personally think the easiest way by far to do this is with a double boiler. Now if you don't have a double boiler, it's not a big deal. I actually don't have one either. I make my own. To do this, you are going to need a medium sized saucepan and you're going to want to fill it about a third of the way with water. Next, you're going to need a medium sized bowl that fits into this saucepan and you want to make sure that the bottom of the bowl is not touching the surface of the water. It can be close, but it shouldn't be touching. We're not going to place the bowl in yet. The first thing we're going to do is bring this pot of water to a simmer. Once it's simmering, we can go ahead and add our bowl. And now we'll add our butter. You're going to need nine tablespoons of unsalted butter for this recipe. And to help speed up the melting process, I like to cut the butter into pieces. We're also going to add one fourth cup of corn syrup, a tablespoon of heavy cream, and just an eighth teaspoon of salt. Now stir this occasionally until your butter is melted and your mixture is completely smooth. Now once it's smooth, I like to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract for flavor. Next, you are going to need your powdered sugar. This recipe uses about three and a quarter cups of powdered sugar. And once your butter mixture is nice and melted, we're going to gradually stir this in as well. It might seem a little bit lumpy at first when you start to add the powdered sugar, just keep stirring until it's nice and smooth. And you may need to add more cream or you might need to add a little bit more butter, but don't panic if it seems a little bit too thick right away. Just let everything continue to warm up and the consistency might be perfect. Now this consistency is actually looking pretty perfect without me having to add anything. You see, if I lift the spatula up, the ribbon that falls back down holds its shape for just a second before it dissolves back into the rest of the icing. I think we're ready to go ahead and test this icing on one of our petty fours. And then if it's too thin or too thick, we can adjust accordingly. So there are a couple ways that you could do this, but I have found that the easiest way to do so is just to take a large fork, dip it in the icing, place your petty four on top, and then drizzle the icing evenly over your petty four. Putting that icing on the fork first helps to hold the petty four in place. And then just use a knife, slide that off, onto a wax paper lined baking sheet, and then repeat with your remaining petty fours. Now today I'm just decorating these with sprinkles, but if you want to decorate yours the way you saw in the very beginning of this video, I really recommend using my easy royal icing recipe. So once your icing has hardened, which honestly happens pretty quickly, your petty fours are ready to enjoy. This one's still a little bit soft because it's only been about a minute since I dipped it, but just look at how cute that is. I'm going to go ahead and cut into one down here for you to see how it looks inside. Just look at those cute, perfect layers. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's recipe. If you tried this one out, I would love to know what you think. I always love hearing from you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.